my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing. He's given me a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what has happened and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Let us pray over this word this morning. Father, we thank you for your holy word. We thank you that your word is a lamp unto our feet. Your word is a light to guide our path. I thank you that your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. I thank you that your word hits the inner part of us today. Lord, if we've come in here burdened, I thank you that you lift burdens. If we've come in here feeling a little hopeless, Lord, I pray that you give us some hope. If we've come in here feeling discouraged, I pray that you'd encourage us by your word, Jesus. Holy Spirit, let my words be few and let your words be powerful. Let your words bring life today, Holy Ghost. For all the preparation that's been had this week, I thank you that you take it from here. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The process of patience. That word patience means the power or the capacity to endure without complaint. Out of the nine fruits of the Spirit talked about in Galatians chapter 5, this is probably one of the most key fruits to possess in decision making, in handling situations or waiting on a word from God and enduring hardship. Maybe in this place this morning, we're in different seasons of life. Maybe we're in a place that we're enduring hardship and we just need a little bit of patience. Maybe we're in a place of waiting on a word from God and we need a little bit of patience. Maybe we're struggling in an area of our life and we're saying, Lord, I need a little bit of patience. I don't know where you are this morning or what you've come in here with, but I believe that the power of patience is going to fall on us today. That no matter what we go through in this life, we will not be shaken because our feet are planted on firm foundation, as Psalm 40 tells us. Jesus knew that this life would be the way that it is. That's why he wants to develop perfect patience in us. Thank God for the victory that we have this morning. As Christ followers, we are patiently awaiting one thing, and that is the return of Jesus Christ. If there's one thing that we are patiently awaiting for, that is his return to come back for his church and his bride. Last night, I was getting a drink of water in my refrigerator, and and I'm standing there, and You know, when you're filling up water, you feel like it's like 10 minutes just for three ounces of water. Anybody been there? If I don't know what patience is, that's it right there. That is patience, filling up water to just get a simple drink. And as I was standing there last night, I heard the Lord say that as as we come to church, as we put our glass in the in the fountain of life, that Jesus wants to fill us all up this morning. And he's saying, just be patient a little while longer. When you come to church, he fills you up. You might not get everything that you need right there on a Sunday morning. You might have come in here expecting something totally different. You might have come in here expecting the room to look different. You might have come in here expecting the lights to look different or the sound to sound different or expect the worship team on stage today. But as we walk in saying, Lord, I am here today for you. I am waiting upon you. I'm waiting upon your presence. God, give me the patience to sit at your feet. Sometimes we get distracted with what, with what we need to do in a moment and we lose our patience. We've all been there. All right, I sit here to, to, to do this and sit down. I talked about this last week, but I'm a, I'm a really clean person. Anybody else a really clean person? Sometimes I lose my patience if stuff is messy. Sometimes I lose my patience if things are dirty, if, if things are, are not put away properly. I lose my patience sometimes, but I declare that over my life, God, give me the perfect patience. Family, patience is a process, but if we keep showing up with the heart that God's patience 
and his, his, his perfect peace gives us what we need, we're going to be just all right. Amen. Amen. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Let's turn there really quick. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Y'all getting anything out of this today? But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord. And a thousand years is like a day. Don't forget this one thing. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord. And a thousand years is like a day. Meaning he can speed time up. And he can slow time down. The Bible says that time is in his hands. Time is in his hands. I want to be a people that is urgent but patient on the Lord and his return. Verse 9 says the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise. How many are waiting on a promise? Amen. I'm the only hand in this place. <laughs> How many are waiting on a promise? The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does want, not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. A pastor said this, how many times have we rebelled? How often have we misrepresented him? How frequently have we presumed upon his forgiveness? How much have we been impatient with God? Only to find out how gently and kindly he handled us in return. Our own impatience pulls back the mask. We may think impatience makes us look good and sound strong, but it grows in the soil of our soul's insecurity and unrest. Patience, on the other hand, reveals true power. And what awesome, extraordinary power is on display when Christ handled, handles us in his perfect patience. 1 Timothy 1.15, you don't have to turn there, but it says, This is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept this. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them all. This is Paul writing. But God had mercy on me so that Christ could use me as a prime example for great patience. Your patience is seen by everybody around you. Use me as a prime example of patience? Oh my goodness. When you don't feel like you have patience, Lord, use me as a prime example? I don't feel like I'm the best example. Use me as a prime example with even, here we go, the worst of the sinners. The Lord spoke this to me last night. A word of advice. Be patient with those who aren't where you are especially those you're trying to bring to God. Amen. Especially those you're trying to bring to God. Be patient with family. Be patient in enduring hardships. Be patient when you're on the job and things are going crazy and you're like, I've been discipling this person for so long and now I'm losing my patience with them and I don't know if they're ever gonna go to church. I don't know if they're ever going to come to faith. Be patient with them, family. Verse 17. Then others will realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life. All honor and glory to God forever and ever. He is the eternal king, the unseen one who never dies. He alone is God. Here's a mindset shift for you. It's not I have to be patient, but I get to be patient because someone's life could depend on it. Right. Impatience affects others. Right. How many are guilty of that? Impatience affects others. Impatience affects the kingdom of God for what God is doing here in the earth. The middle ground is the molding ground for God to develop his patience and character in you. I feel like the, the harvest is an urgent impatience. The harvest that God is doing here on the earth of sending people into the field, it is an urgent impatience. 
Because we, we believe what God has said. We're, we're asking for these things. We're, we're crying out to the Lord saying, Lord, save America. Save Texas. Save Austin. Lord, we've been praying and crying out for so long. And, and Lord, check my heart because sometimes we lose patience. But God is saying, don't be impatient for what I'm doing because I'm working and I'm moving. Do we believe that this morning? Are we being patient with the Lord? Are we being patient with each other? Are we being patient with our own lives? Don't be so hard on yourself, family. Don't be so hard on yourself. Sometimes we got to pick ourselves up. If we feel down one week, like, Lord, I, I feel like I'm losing it. Lord, am I losing my mind? No, you're not losing your mind. Right. Know who you are in Christ. Pick your head up. Put your shoulders back and say, I'm a son. I'm a daughter of the most high God. Right. Nothing's going to shake me today. Right. My feet are planted upon firm foundations. Though the wars rage all around me, I am standing confident with who I am. I'm a son of the most high. Nothing's going to shake me today. It's not arrogance. It's boldness for, for what God has called you to be. Who he said that you are. You're an heir according to the promise. I don't know if you need to hear that this morning. You're an heir according to the promise. There's an urgency. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 says, Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Have you ever found that the place that you, found, that you find the most joy in is actually the most tested place of patience? Think about that. The place that you find joy in is actually a place where you feel the most tested in your patience. I'm a golfer. I love to golf. And if there's any golfers in the house this morning, I would love to connect with you. But I love golf and I find so much joy in it. But I'm also so impatient when I'm on the golf course because I like to play so fast. I'm like, let's get it. Let's hit it. Let's go to the next hole. But when there's slow golfers in front of me, Joe, you know this, you begin to get impatient. You begin to lose that joy of the first tee shot and nobody's in front of you. All of a sudden you get to hole five and, and you're like, man, I, it, now, it's, now it's stuck for the next three and a half hours. When I should have been playing for two hours, now I have to wait five, six minutes between each shot. I don't like that. I don't like that. And I don't like playing with slow golfers. But I have patience if they're my friends, praise God. And I find so much joy being out on the course. But the places that we find our joy in will also be the moments of testing for us, of patience. John 16, 33 says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. The world is constantly pressuring us into their agenda and what fits their script. And, and sometimes we, we, we feel that, that pressure of impatience, right? There's like, okay, now, you know, politics are doing this or the economy is doing this and and now we start to lose our that we start to lose our patience and we start to get impatient over things that we're like I didn't wake up feeling this we turn the news on and all of a sudden our we're, we, our, our our brain goes cycling or we or we get on social media and we're like I'm not where that person is I'm not where that person was and and I used to do that now I don't do that anymore and now I'm getting impatient because I want to do that and I really can't 
we lose our patience. I want to talk about perfectionism for just a moment. Perfectionism causes worry and stress because the only perfect thing is Christ. Don't let perfectionism override your patience. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Say this, my, his power is perfect in me. His power is perfect in me. Peace. Patience is led by peace, resulting in kindness. The Bible says in Galatians 5, love, joy, peace. What's next? Patience and kindness. Patience is led by peace, resulting in kindness. Proverbs 15, 18 says, hot tempers cause arguments, but patience brings peace. Process, Galatians 6, 9. I want to talk about process for a moment. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Are you content whether it comes or it doesn't come? Are you content if it comes or it doesn't come? He must be your everything. Jesus must be your all in all. He must be the one that your heart desires to be with. He must be the one that wakes you up in the morning. That causes us to say, Jesus, you be magnified today. Jesus, you be glorified today. Lord, we lost our patience yesterday, but today my patience in you is enough. Ecclesiastes 9.11 says, I have observed something else under the sun. The fastest runner doesn't always win the race. And the strongest warrior doesn't always win the battle. The wise sometimes go hungry. And the skillful are not necessarily wealthy. And those who are educated don't always lead successful lives. Whoa. Those who are educated don't always lead successful lives. As I'm saying that, the Holy Spirit is just downloading on my heart right now. Doesn't always lead successful lives. I don't know. I just feel like saying this this morning. Success in the kingdom is loving Jesus first. Amen. Success in the kingdom is loving your family well at home. Success in the kingdom is loving your spouse that God sent into your life. Success in the kingdom is believing for the promises of God that he has spoken over you over and over and over again. I could care less about my education. I could care less about what we've accomplished If my success in life is not attached to the success of the kingdom of God, I don't want it. it. I don't want it. If my life being successful is on my knees before the Father, that is enough for me because his blood paid the ultimate sacrifice so that I could be here, living, breathing vessel of the kingdom of God that no man or woman could shake that foundation from under me this morning. I don't care about education. 
We need it, we do. But if we put education above the successful things of the kingdom, we've got it all backwards. The Bible says, here we go, that when we seek first the kingdom of God, all the other things will be added unto you. Yeah. Woo, I felt. All the other things will be added unto you. That's like a fire in my spirit right now. Everything else will be added unto you. We've overcomplicated it, church. And I'm not just saying this room, but the body of Christ. We put the successful things of life. And we wonder why we are impatient the way that we are. Because we put things above Jesus. We put things above what he's paid for. And all of a sudden we're like, Lord, my life just just feels an absolute mess. And I'm losing my patience every day. But God is saying this morning, would you come back to the first love of the cross of Calvary this morning? Will you come back and and kneel at my feet and, and bow before me and be patient in my presence you see, family, we, we sometimes want to want to come into his presence and come into his house with, with thanksgiving. And, and five minutes into his presence, we, we begin to get impatient. We begin to, we begin to move around and, and all of a sudden we're like, Lord, I, I, all this stuff going on. But what if one more minute, 30 more seconds, 10 more minutes on our feet, 10 more minutes with our hands lifted up, saying, Christ be magnified in this place, is the moment where God says, the power of my patience is now upon you, child. It's gonna be a process. And it's gonna be perfect in Him. And it's gonna be perfect in His peace. It's going to be imperfect to the world because the world doesn't know. The world can't take this away. The world can't take this joy away from me. This world cannot say, here's $2 million, shut the church down and do this. No, 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 no. The call of God over your life is not for sale. The call of God over your life is not for sale for anybody. For any ministry, for every man, for any woman, for any job, the call of God is so much greater over your life. Patience to receive what he's promised and that he will do what he said he would do in your life. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, the last scripture that I'm going to read this morning. says, but they wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Let's stand to our feet. Hey, thank you for tuning in to the Capital City Church YouTube channel. We'd love for you to subscribe so that you know when we post new content. Make sure to leave us a comment and let us know what spoke to you today, where you're watching from, And what can we pray for you about? And if you'd like to support the ministry financially, you can click the Give button now and help us continue reaching people around the world for Jesus Christ. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.